Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In one of my previous videos, I have explained the logical flow of FIMM integration and many people have asked me to explain the same for FISD integration. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through the logic or the linkage between different components in the FISD integration. Hope you will find this video useful. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video and share it with your friends and keep me motivated to post many such videos. So let's jump into the video. When we talk about FISD integration, the two main components that comes into picture are the pricing procedure and the GL determination. Pricing procedure is the primary link between the sales order and the accounting documents that get generated in the entire O2C cycle. And of course, once a document is about to get generated, GL determination also comes into picture. And this GL determination is closely linked with the pricing procedure. So first, let us try to understand the pricing procedure from a logical point of view, not from a configurational point of view as the main focus, but why do we need a pricing procedure and what are the different elements in the pricing procedure and why do we need each of these elements and how can we easily remember so that we can debug every issue in the pricing procedure or the entire O2C cycle without need to remember all the configuration steps. The first question is why do we require a pricing procedure? To understand this, let us take an Excel sheet and try to understand the various components that will determine the final sales price of an item. Assume that we are selling a shirt and the MRP or the listed price of the shirt is 1000 rupees. Now when an item of 1000 rupees has been listed in a shop and you are going to purchase that, there might be a discount being offered by the shop. Let us assume that there is a discount of minus 100 rupees. In addition to this discount, you might have a coupon which you might be redeeming when you are purchasing something. So there is a coupon discount further on this one which is probably a 50 rupees so the total price at which you are getting this item is now 850 rupees now on top of this the shop might be adding something called as a shipping charges or what can also be a freight this will be a fixed price or probably a percentage of your sale value let us assume this is a fixed price for now and i'll keep it as 100 rupees so now the total value has again become 950 rupees now on this there is a tax that is being applicable so I'll take a tax at 10% of the sale value. So it is 950 rupees and 95, which is 10%. So I'll add it as 95. And the final sales price at which this item is being sold is sum of all these components. So it is 1045 rupees. So these are the various components. These are an example where I'm showing you various components which can be involved in, in arriving at the final sales price of an item. So this MRP is your actual listed price and there are various components of this one which can increase the value or decrease the value which will ultimately arrive at the sales price. Now, every organization need to keep a track of each and every component so that they can understand what are the total discounts being offered, what is the tax that we're collecting from the customer which needs to be paid to the government, what are the total shipping charges that are being charged by the customer. This will help them to keep a track of their expenses and their revenues. So, in order to configure or in order to capture all these components in the system, it is important for us to determine or to configure something called as a pricing procedure. The pricing procedure is nothing but a SAP representation of this Excel cells which we have just now filled. So it will contain all these components, it will have the values of all each of these components and it will ultimately arrive at the sales price. We'll again later on go and understand how the values will be determined. But we will first try to understand how these different components will be configured in the pricing procedure and how are each of these components linked. Because it is also important to link these components because discount is something that you always wanted to capture on the MRP. But discount is not something that you wanted to capture on the tax. So this kind of a linkage like discount is applicable only on MRP and tax is applicable on the total sale value and shipping value should be an addition but not a subtraction. Discounts should be always negative values. So all these kind of parameters for each and every component are to be configured in the pricing procedure. So this is the primary requirement of having a pricing procedure. Now let us say this is my retail sale. I'll say this is a retail sales pricing procedure. Now there can be various types of sales that you are doing. For example, you have a different model of sale wherein you are not offering any discounts or there is no shipping charges. So in that case, what you are going to do is either you can change the existing pricing procedure or for the sake of easiness, you can create a new pricing procedure, which I'll say it as PP2. And in this one, maybe on MRP, you might not have 
free charges so we'll have only discount and there is no coupon discount that is being offered here and there's a tax component and which will ultimately determine what is the final sales price so like this depending upon the various components that you require based on the type or the nature of sale that is happening you will need to configure different pricing procedures and the ultimate functionality or the ultimate purpose of a pricing procedure is always to arrive at the final sale price from the initial MRP value by adding or subtracting the values of different components that we configure. And another functionality of pricing procedure is to flow these values from your sales module to the financial module. So I'll come to that later. But before that, let us understand, I am removing this example. Let us take this example and understand how we can convert this components as the sales pricing procedure in SAP. Now let us say first one is MRP. So there is something called as condition type in SAP which will determine each and every component. So each and every component we create it as something called as a condition type. Now let us say for MRP we are giving a code as PR00 which is a standard condition type of SAP for the sales price or the MRP. And next one we are having discount percentage which is RB00 or a rebate 00. On top of this there is a coupon discount. Let us I'll use one more discount which called as K007 which is a customer discount and again there is a condition type standard condition type for shipping or freight which is KF00 and there is also a tax component there is a standard condition type for this one from India GST point of view there is one condition type called as JOIG which is for integrated GST so these are different conditions or in other terms, these are the different components that we are creating in a pricing procedure. Let us say we are giving this pricing procedure name as ZPP001. So now we understood what is condition type in the pricing procedure. So let us make it a bit more formatted. So this is the pricing procedure ZPP001 and there is something called as a condition type and these are the different condition types that we are creating. Let us also give a sequencing for this one. I'll give a serial number. And I'll add the values for the serial number later on. Let me take this completely into a new sheet. So we are also having something called as a serial number. So first one is obviously PR00, which is our base price. Only based on this base price, we are going to determine each and every component. So this is always the first one. And tax, we also always say this is the last component. So on the price, we're adding something called as discount and over that we're adding a customer discount and next we're adding the freight charges and over all of these we are having a tax value so this is the sequence in which the values should be calculated now how are we going to say that rebate is going to be calculated only on pr00 and k007 is calculated on the sum of these two and kf00 should be calculated on the sum of these two and joig should be calculated on the sum of first four condition types so that is something called as from and to from and to will determine what are the conditions or what are the serial numbers which will be acting as a base value for performing the necessary calculations defined in this condition type so for pr00 which is our ultimate base value or the mrp I'll write it as MRP. There is no further base value that is to be considered for this one because this is the base value for the entire pricing procedure. So the from and to will be always 0, 0 or you can leave it as blank. Let me also copy these values here which is for our reference. So the next one is the discount component or the RB00 condition type and discount is always to be calculated based on the MRP. So the base value for RB00 is our PR00. So I'll give the from and to values as one to one. So whenever the system is trying to execute the formula of this particular condition type, that means adding up a value of minus 100 to the base value of 1000, it will try to refer to the from and to, and it will try to understand on which value this minus 100 should be summed up to. So if we take this as a condition value, and this is the total value, for the first one, the total value and the condition value is 1000. Now, when we're executing the second condition, which is RB00, here we are going to mention the condition value as minus 100 and the total value by mentioning from and to as one to one, we are telling the system that the total value will be 1000 plus the condition value, which is 900. 
So this is how the from and to will act. Now when we are going to the coupon discount, the coupon discount from and to should be sum of these two. That means it is 1000 plus minus 100 which is 900. On this 900 again further we are adding a value of minus 50. So we are going to say it as 1000 plus 100 minus 100 plus minus 50 which is 850. So the from value will be 1 and to value will be 2. That means the sum of 1 and 2 on top of that we are going to sum the value of this K007 which is a coupon discount. This is one way of determining the from and to in this case. If we want there is another way in which we can define it. So the another way is Instead of taking this as 3, I will take this as 3 and here I am going to add a temporary condition which I will call it as MRP minus discount. There is no condition type for this one, it is just a statistical line that we are adding it. So here the values will be 1, 2, 2. So the total value of this condition will be 1000 plus minus 100 which is 900. Now when we are defining the fourth value which is K007 or my coupon discount, here the condition type is blank as I said, it is just MRP minus discount which is a statistical value for our reference. So when we are again defining the condition or the condition for coupon discount, instead of taking it as 1 to 2, here I can just refer it to as 3 to 3. So when I refer it as 3 to 3, the condition value is minus 50 and to the system what I am saying is instead of summing up all the H8, H9 or H11, that means all these three, what I am doing it here is I am telling the system directly to take the condition value as 900 plus minus 50, the value is 850. So in order to simplify the pricing procedure for the future reference purposes, it is always advised to add these statistical lines in between which will calculate the sum till that level. So now further on this one, after coupon discount, I will add one more line here. So let me add one more line. So I'll mention it as discounted MRP minus coupon discount. So this is my fifth line item. So if you see, we are making changes to this line ends after creating the serial numbers of 1 to 5. So in production or in the real environment, in order to avoid this kind of renaming of the entire series, what we do is we name this numbering from 100 or this is 200, this is 300, like that. So if this is if this was 300 and this was 400 and 500, if I wanted to add one more line here, which will hold the total of this lines 100 and 200, I need not change the serial number of this one to 300. I can just keep it as 201, which will be our MRP minus discount. And here my base values also will change from 100 to 100, and this will be 100 to 200, and this one will be 201 to 201. Now next one I'm adding one more condition type here which is 301 which is discounted MRP minus coupon discount. This is also a statistical line. There is no condition type for this one and the value here is 300 201 to 300. So the condition value of this one will be 900 plus minus 50 which is 850. Now when the fourth condition type KF00 or the shipping or freight charges, instead of directly adding it up or giving the from as 102 as 301, I can directly give this as 301 to 301. So the total value will this be uh, KF00, the freight charges what we added is 100 which is the condition value and the total at this level will be 850 plus 100 which is 950. Similarly, for JOIG or here also I am adding one more line for our simplicity, I will take it as price before tax. So this one will be 401 or 450 whatever we can and this is also a statistical line. So the sum of this will be 301 to 400. So the value of this one will be 850 plus 100 which is 950 and on this 950 we are going to add a tax percentage. So here the base value for calculating the tax is 401. So I'll give it as 401 to 401. And the value of this one is 10% which is 95. So the condition value should be or, or the condition value is 950 into 10% which is 95. And the total at this point will be 
950 plus 95 which is 1045 I can add one more statistical line item which is final price or final sales price I'll say it as 550 and this is again a statistical line item so I'm not assigning any condition type for this one so the value is 4 sorry uh, 401 plus 500 or 401 till 500 so the value at this point is 950 plus 95 which is 1045 this is how we are going to define what is the base value for each and every condition which will help to calculate the correct value so we, we need to be sure of what is the base value at each level if the tax should be calculated on price before tax then it should be after price before tax or the tax is something that is to be calculated on the mrp even before the discount which is not the case but if, if at all it is that is the case then this tax condition should be the second serial number before the discount and after the mrp so it is very much important to have a proper sequencing of this condition types because this is how the ultimate value of the final sales price is determined in the pricing procedure to keep things simple i am going to split this entire video into two parts so the next part we are going to see the remaining part of the fisd integration see you until then take care